Coleco, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. So when we had that committee meeting yesterday, you said there needs to be a meeting of minds, otherwise the chaos will continue. Um, do you want to expand on that for us, please? Um, thank you, Martin. Good afternoon to you and the viewers. I think on behalf of Scopa, one must first convey condolences to ENC and the Tom family because Lumile was one of the permanent features of our meetings with the many reporters which you sent there. So we offer condolences to Nandipa, his wife, and um, his children and his family and friends. And may Lumile rest in ten of peace. We were always proud of the professional work we um, had with him in the committee. On the issue that uh, you raised, obviously there is a serious concern on the part of SCOPA because the business rescue practitioners were supposed to have finished their work on the 6th of March. Today is the 16th of May, and there is still a touring and flowing between the Department of Public Enterprises as the shareholder representative of government and the business rescue practitioners. The draft uh, business rescue plan, which they have um, put together um, in the words of the department and the minister and um, had serious deficiencies. It was only tabled to us, of course, during the meeting last night, and therefore we have not had time um, to look at it. But what is, of course, concerning is that over the past four months or so, um, SAA has spent about 10 billion rand. You're looking at the fact that the business rescue practitioners individually have earned 15 million rand each um, since they came into uh, SAA in December. And this, of course, excludes the cost of their consultants that they are working with um, on, on this matter. Therefore, we are slowly but surely snowballing into what is becoming a money-making scheme and not actually becoming a cost-saving exercise for the fiscal and the taxpayer. And then we are not arriving at a point of finality in so far as the direction which an um, SAA will be taken. The business rescue practitioners are coming to rescue um, the business. We do not get a sense um, that that is being done. And, of course, on the other hand, you've got the um, you've got government which is saying that uh, they are looking at the establishment of a new um, airline. In between the two processes or two uh, ideas which are at play, one, of course, which is firmly required of the business rescue practitioners. There are a lot of um, issues of uncertainty. We have not actually seen consequence management in so far as uh, you know, SAA shortcomings are concerned. Then, of course, COVID-19 was a spanner in the works which has further compounded the SAA headache. And so, uh, by all material respect, um, the fact that the department and the business rescue practitioners, mm -hmm. in terms of outlook, are not singing from the same hymn sheet, we are concerned by that. So we've given them a deadline of the 26th of May to submit to Parliament a comprehensive roadmap with time frames, deadlines, insofar as how they are now going to bring this matter to a logical conclusion, and so that we we, we, we bite the bullet in whatever decision that government um, will take hours as scope mm -hmm. to ensure that whatever decisions are taken must be done within the parameters of the law and in the collective interest of the taxpayer. And then as it stands, we heard uh, the Public Enterprises Minister Praveen Gordon still saying that, you know what, options and different types of options need to be pursued and put on the table. He was not happy about the fact that there were, there were practically no options down, just the winding down route. Are you confident that you could see options being tabled even at this point from the business rescue practitioners? Well, all we want is for them to be committed to their own commitments and to be committed to deadlines and time frames. The business rescue practitioners, whatever the circumstances, need to understand that this is not an open-ended process. They need to present whatever is in their view the best possible direction for the airline, and then we take it from at that point. For all we have right now is a draft business rescue plan, and of course, which is still being debated between the Department of Public Enterprises and the Ministry, and on one hand with the business rescue practitioners. And so that's why we are saying these two parties which are intricately involved in this matter must um, actually find each other. And if they do not actually 
um, commit themselves to deadlines, we will stipulate those deadlines for them. So this is their final chance that we are giving to them because you'll recall we met with the minister in the presence of the business rescue practitioners in February. And for us, the situation as open-ended as it's become is totally unacceptable and speaks um, to serious shortcomings and an unhealthy working relationship between the two entities. We are expecting the business rescue practitioners to perform their duties within the parameters of the law and then hand over to government a, a plan which we will then have to interrogate as to whether it is in the collective interest of the taxpayer. Then the final mm-hmm. point on this matter is that, of course, we've also been, um, after a, 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 a long haul battle with SAA uh, Scope, we have finally received um, the um, financial statements of the airline. And, of mm-hmm. course, they are catastrophic. Um, you're looking at um, losses um, over 10 billion rand, and the financial health of the entity it does not inspire confidence. You're speaking about an entity that has received bailouts of 31 billion rand over the past few years and guarantees with a value of 20 billion rand. But when you look at the, the money which has been given to the to SAA by the taxpayer, you do not see the value for money. It's been bleeding the fiscal, and that is why we remain fundamentally concerned at what is going on. But at the same time, we are drawing a, a line in the sand to say this musical chairs which has been played and um, actually has to end, and we are tying them down now to a timeline. Yeah, because if those timelines, I would imagine, is not respected, then, of course, those dreadful figures you see on those financial statements just cost the South African taxpayer more money. Yes, of course, that is what we are trying to avoid. We do not want a situation whereby the presence of the business risk to practitioners and the uncertainty continues to um, cost the taxpayer money. Um, the situation is already bad. Um, for all intents and purposes, um, SAA is in ICU, um, and we, 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 we remain concerned by the fact that there are still certain quarters which believe that um, it's financial solutions which will save the airline. No, there are serious business decisions that need to be taken, um, restructuring uh, reforms within the airline, which are part of the options available to them. And, of course, these options uh, are, not, um, uh, you know, are not exclusive of the possibilities of liquidation. That option needs to remain firmly on the table if all else fails so that we can with certainty move into the next phase of SAA. This is in the interest of the workers. This is in the interest of the taxpayers. And at the same time, it is to ensure um, that the taxpayer does not continue funding a vanity project which is which has actually not um, subjected itself to cost-cutting measures and phasing and respecting just the taxpayer from the principal point of view because our expectation is that SAA should be generating money for the fiscal. Not the fiscal that should be continuously funding SAA um, endlessly. And so on the 26th of May, we are expecting a concrete timeline um, with deadlines so that we can be in a position to take this discussion forward. It's mm-hmm. been open ended for far too long, and our patience is waning very soon. All right, thanks very much indeed. He's the chairperson of Parliament's Standing uh, Committee on Public Accounts, Mkleko Tlengwa, there.